lot of camps, haven't you? Yep. This old possum hide has been to camp for 41 summers, and quite a few winters, too. How many of those summers were you in camp, Mary? Almost all of them, as a camper or counselor. Over 30 as director of elementary and junior high camps. Now our campers' children are coming back as campers and counselors. You've both dedicated many years to outdoor ministry. That's why we've asked you to share some of what you've learned with that you can find out, you know, about, about your health and about uh, what affects, really I'm talking now about what affects older people because mm -hmm. uh, that's entirely different than, uh, than the way younger people are affected by medicines and um, all of that sort of thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. You were telling me uh, recently about a friend of yours who had an experience which was unfortunate because she was not a very educated consumer. Uh -huh. Tell us about it. Well, I think even though she'd been educated, maybe she would d depend on the doctor too much. But however, it was a vicious circle. It's something that can happen to anyone. Mm -hmm. um, this woman had um, sciatica. She went to her primary health care doctor, who was an internist. He recommended her to a rheumatologist. She went to a rheumatologist who gave her uh, medication. Uh, she, uh, and at the same time, she was taking medication for high blood pressure. Uh, about two weeks after she now, started... And now, she now was taking three different no, medications? No, two. Oh, two. The health uh, for um, high blood pressure mm -hmm. and also for the, um, uh, for the, the arthritis. Uh -huh. About a week after she'd been taking that arthritis uh, medication, uh, she began having um, vertigo, uh, dizziness a very severe dizziness, and she couldn't understand what it was all about. She went back to a primary health care doctor. Uh, he suggested that she go to a neurologist. Uh, the neurologist gave her another prescription for the vertigo, uh, which made her very constipated, which when she had to have the bowel movement, she had to force uh, and brought back the um, sciatica again, a vicious circle. Mm. Come to find out, it was the medication that the, um, that, the, uh, uh, that the rheumatologist was giving her uh, that was one of the side effects. So here she was in a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. And um, she talked to me about it. I got very angry about it. And uh, so, so we've got to do something about this. And uh, the doctor, the uh, neurologist, should have said, uh, are you taking any medication? With, before he prescribed anything else, and he didn't. So well, you need to be aware of uh, what the side effects are for every single thing that, that's prescribed uh -huh. for you. And doctors, I know it's a little different now, but when we used to go to a doctor, uh, if you were old, he would say, well, what do you expect at your age? You yes, know? I know. Uh, so now we say we expect to feel better, <laughs> and we expect to, uh, to be active, and we expect to, you to keep us active. Uh, also, we expect to know what's going on in our bodies and what the medication is doing, and and we're going to ask you about it, and uh -huh. we're going to want uh -huh. some answers. Uh -huh. So, so that this is uh, part of of being an educated medical That's or right. a yes. health consumer. We, we uh, have to we have to know though what questions we should be asking our doctors. Well, I think the the big question is when a doctor prescribes medication. Uh, say, what are the side effects? What do I expect to have uh -huh, happen? Uh -huh. And um, then... Of course, actually, it should be his responsibility to tell the patient. Well, I know, but... But if he doesn't... They don't. The They're patient no should know. So the patient has got to know themselves, yes. mm -hmm. and uh, they've, they've got to be aware of, of that, you know. And also, uh, when there was prescribed medication, for instance, if an older person goes to a doctor with, uh, uh, with symptoms of... Um, a depression. Uh, maybe the doctor might say, "Well, you you know you're having uh, dementia, or you're on the verge of of uh, Alzheimer's, or whatever." Uh, if a young person went with the same symptoms, you know, confused and and uh, depressed, the doctor would say, "Well, you 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 are depressed, and you're having a nervous breakdown," and they'd give them all kinds of medication for that. Now we're finding that older people respond to that medication too, and doctors are just beginning to realize that uh, mm -hmm. people everybody doesn't get senile when they get old, you know. Mm -hmm. so uh, which brings me to your part as a lecturer. Yes, to medical students. You, you do. Tell, tell us about who you lecture to and what you're telling them. 
Well, I started with medical students at Columbia University about 10 years ago, I guess. And uh, the, the doctor that, I, that had me come there uh, said that it was very beneficial to the students. So he had me come three or four times at Columbia. And then uh, they called me at Mount Sinai. And I talked with, um, with students who were uh, training, you know. Young medical students. Medical students. And the, there was a time when in medical school, uh, there, was no, there were no courses on gerontology or geriatrics. Now most of the colleges have these. And Dr. Butler at um, Mount Sinai started the department over there on geriatric mm -hmm. uh, medicine. So that the doctors are getting some of that. But they need to see well old people because in their training they see old people who are in hospitals and in nursing homes so to them all old people are sick and they need to see uh -huh. they need to know that uh, everybody doesn't get sick when they get old you right. get you get impairments and things happen but there are a lot of people with these things that are coping with it you know and this is what this is another sense that you need to realize that maybe you do have an impairment maybe you do have arthritis right. maybe you do have these things that are crippling to some people, but you need to realize that you can cope with it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, maybe up until 25 years ago, it, it was true because most people, I suppose, did get old. Mm -hmm. well, of course, we, pe people were not living as long no. as they are living well, we, now. We didn't have the, uh, uh, we didn't have the research then, you know, yeah. and all of the, uh, uh, all of the knowledge then that we have now. But there's a. They've got a long ways to go, and I think the consumers are have to be responsible, you know, for for a lot of their well-being. I think they have to be aware of the importance of proper nutrition. Uh, exercise is important, and um, you know, when I was young, we had a doc, one doctor, yes. but he was the obstetrician, he was a surgeon, he was everything, and uh, he used to say, "Let's give nature a chance." You know, they don't do that anymore. You get medications, so we need to to use some common sense about yeah. and uh, do a lot of things ourselves. I think natural things we have to uh, be yeah. aware of. Uh -huh. You mean uh, the example that you just gave about your friend who went mm. to the different doctors and each one gave her something different which mm -hmm. interacted. Uh, maybe we're over medicated. I think so. Of course, uh, older people cannot take the uh, the dosage of medication that younger people can take and doctors need Doctors, most doctors are aware of that, but many of them are not. And uh, a lot of older people become very confused and disoriented because of, the, of uh, too much medication. Yes, I know. And that's the reason that that happens. So I think um, I'd like to give a lot of things. There are many things, of course, we need education for the sugar diabetes, and the, there are things that uh, you know affect your vital organs that need to be medicated, heart conditions, and that sort of thing. But there's a lot of things that we can sort of go through with exercise and nutrition and, uh, and common sense things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I must say, Lydia, Lydia Bagger, you're a very good example of what, if you must know about nutrition and exercise and all the things that are important because um, you are not a terribly young person. I mean, you, you are a vital person, but chronologically I'm talking about. Because that, that word young, I mean, no, I, don't I don't like, like the, the word, word young. young. I'm old. Yes. And I like that word old. And I think that, yeah. you know, when I'm introduced sometimes, yeah. uh, the person that introduces me will say, uh, this young lady is going to talk about oh. that really. Yes. Teaches. That's a lot of little demeaning. So you I know said, he the last time this happens, I said, what do you, why do you introduce me that way? And he said, well, you think young. And I said, well, why can't you think old and have it good, too? He didn't have any answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I'm 85, and I'll be 86 in two months in December. So uh, I think I have all my buttons. Sometimes I wonder. I forget things. And, well, and doesn't I'm everyone doing forget of, things? I'm doing a lot of rushing around, which I shouldn't do. I, I need to, to slow down a little bit, but I don't know enough. And besides, you, you just moved physically, didn't you, across, across the city? across was a nightmare. Tell us just about moving. it. Well, I, uh, this is something that, that you have to cope with, I guess. Uh, I moved from a larger apartment, a large one-bedroom apartment, a large living room and a terrace and all something. I had to move because of the environment to, into a studio, a very small studio. So I had to get rid of a lot of my things. I, I got, have three filing cabinets, and I got them down to one filing cabinet. Oh. I had uh, all kinds of furniture, large furniture, 
My grandchildren came from Rhode Island, and they all had a lot of stuff. I don't know whether they wanted or not, but they got it. And I, had, I got rid of an awful lot of stuff, clothes and things. Then I moved, and I still had more than I had room for. So mm -hmm. it's been a very, it's been a traumatic experience. It's, it's very traumatic and when you have to move and give up some things that you have uh, had for a long time yeah. and that have a lot of memories for you, isn't mm -hmm. it? Well, I think the thing to do is take the things that you really love, mm -hmm. and then uh, then get rid of a lot of things that maybe it pulls at some heartstrings. But the things that you really want, I think you have to choose. And I didn't do that exactly, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm finally, I, have, I still have some cardboard boxes at, from the 28th of August that are unpacked. And when I get those unpacked, then I, <laughs> then I will, <laughs> I can relax a little bit. But yeah. it hasn't been easy, and I had a lot of commitments in the meantime. Yes. So I didn't have time to, to rest very much. Right. So, but, um, say la vie. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about your lecturing. How long have you been doing that, and how did you get into it, and what do you talk about? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, way back in my the 40s, I, my, uh, my profession was I was in the media. I had a television show in Rhode Island on an NBC affiliated station when everything came out live, you know, uh -huh. there was no cutting. You, what you saw is what you got. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then I did the news on radio then, and um, so that was way back there. Um, I got involved in the, in more in the medical. Th well, I I had a practical nurse's diploma. I did that when my children were growing up. I went to school and all. So I've always been studying. Uh, but uh, I think as I got older and saw what was happening to older people and saw how they were being pushed around mm -hmm. and how they were there was so little respect for people when they got older. And uh, so much injustice. I got angry, and I said, I've got to do something. I've got to get into this and get involved. So I got into the Grey Panthers in 1972, and I started the uh, New York Grey Panther group then. Mm -hmm. And uh, right after that, um, we got letters from people all over complaining about the images of older people in the media. So I said, well, that's my field. So I'll, you know, and I realized the importance because so many millions of people are watching and, and are influenced. You, you know, people believe what they see That's many right. times. So I got into that and I formed uh, Grey Panther Media Watch. And we worked uh, with media people, uh, with uh, executives in the, uh, in the um, networks. And I had been on the, working on both sides of the fence, so I knew exactly how to approach. Mm -hmm. I never threatened. Uh, I was disarming many times. They didn't expect what would happen when I complained, but the, uh, the doors were always open. I could go and talk things over. We looked at things together and talked it over. So we made some changes, a lot of changes since 1973. Um, if you think about it, you know, older people are being shown now in more positive ways. Mm -hmm. At that time, you never saw an older person yeah. in a commercial unless it was uh, uh, for an ache and pain remedy, you mm -hmm. know, it had to be mm -hmm. something to do with, with pain or yeah. medicine or dental yeah. things. And uh, so, of course, aging and, um, and illness were synonymous. So now you see older people doing things that everybody else does. Uh, we see in movies, we see in, um, on the stage, we see in television shows older people being shown as human beings. Mm -hmm. So when uh, people complain now about stereotyping older people, it doesn't bother me too much because I, everybody's stereotyped. And I think older people, uh, we know more about them, so we know that they're not the way they're shown. They're not, they're not all stupid or boring or, you know. Uh, useless. So, uh, they used to useless. be useless sure. and sexless sure. and over the hill. And nothing. And everything negative. Yeah, yeah. Mm. so that, um, uh, so anyway, I got involved in um, in the talking to medical people, to go back to what you asked mm -hmm. me, yes. which I remember, that's fortunate. <laughs> uh, I, um, I think I was speaking, uh, I was lecturing someone because I talked a lot about media and aging. And uh, one of the doctors at, at uh, Columbia uh, heard me or heard about me or something and asked mm -hmm. me to come over and speak to his students, which I did. And uh, uh, he's still a very good friend of mine. Uh, so that I was there three or four times, and then he went over to Mount Sinai and had charge of the fellows program over there in the Department of Geriatrics. And uh, so he had me come over there, 
and there are other doctors over there that um, have had me come over and speak to the students. But I, I really, what I talk to them about is uh, is uh, well older people and uh, is well older yes, people. Yes, and mm -hmm. and how uh, some older people are, and the myths that have always be been believed. You know, everybody when you get old you forget. And, you know, when you forget, that's the first thing anybody says. I must be getting old. You know, I, I know that Lydia, and I, I wonder I wonder about why they picked that particular thing. Because I know kids forget things. Of course, of course. Well, I think that was a thing that older people uh, was more evident, probably. But I, I think we have selective memories. I think we remember a lot of things we want to. I think I so. remember vital things. If I have to remember an address where I'm going, I don't forget it, or a telephone number. But uh, some of the things, um, you know, we, they're not so important. Yeah, they're important. Mm. That's right. Yeah. So we sort of sort things out now. I think that might be true. Because you know, as you get older, you have to, more things are in, in your brain. Your your computer well. memory is enlarged, <laughs> and so you have to become selective. There's yes. just so much the brain will hold. That's the way I figure. I like I'm sure that's that. not very scientific, mm -hmm. but we haven't yet talked about what it is you are talking to these medical students about. Yes, well, I talk to them about, as I say, older people, the way they are, and there are many older people, old as I am, uh, that um, could be as active if they thought they could be. And I talked to them about the importance of uh, taking a little time with them and of treating them like human beings mm -hmm. and of um, giving them hope. You know, some doctors treat you, you know, they, they don't give you any hope at all. You just think that you're not going to no. survive. And they're not so, interested in uh, it. Yeah. So then I also go to, uh, I've been all over the country talking, even in England and uh, in Germany and the places that are talking about older people. So uh, there seems to have be a need for consumers. You know, they want to hear from consumers because that's the horse's mouth. That's that's what they're treating. Y you mean the health profession really wants yeah, to hear they about do. they do from consumers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You you went to uh, to Switzerland last year, didn't you? Yes, I did. Who, who did you go with there? I went. My sister and I went together. But there was a health conference yeah. there, uh -huh. and um, I was amazed. There were doctors from all over the world. Uh, there wasn't a doctor from the United States, I don't think. However, uh, if there had been, he missed his call, he missed his chance because there was, wasn't one mention about geriatrics, about older people. So when we had our sessions afterwards, uh, you know, we could talk, I said, I'm surprised that there wasn't a geriatrician here uh, with the, with the uh, population growing so fast of older people. Mm -hmm. uh, you, we need to be aware, you know, to, uh, doctors need to know how to treat older people. So they s decided this year they would have it. So I didn't go this year, but um, I think it was on the agenda that there was a geriatrician there. Uh -huh. Well, so, you, you were spreading your influence far and wide. Well, that's important. <laughs> <laughs> Lydia Braggart, it, yeah. cer it certainly is important. Mm -hmm. How many places have you lectured in, the, in this country? Ooh. Is it usually medical schools or is it? Medical schools, health providers, I was at uh, Ithaca College last week, and there were um, social workers, and, and then they have classes there. They have a course there in, uh, in geriatrics. Well, we, what was your subject there? Well, there was the joys of aging. And you know, as you get older, it's harder oh. to find the joys of aging. You have to, you have to look hard. Well, what there did you say? There I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious, Lydia. What, what did you say? Yeah, well, I said, you know, uh, the biggest joy is realizing the joys. I think that's uh -huh. <laughs> But there are a lot of joys in aging. You know, there are a lot of things happen to you that uh, things you can do that you never could do before. You can speak out. You can, you can be independent. You don't have people depending on you anymore, uh -huh. so that you don't have to feel that respons responsibility that you had before. So you can do things that you want to do. So, I used to speak about sex after sixty when I was in my sixties. Then it was sex after seventy when I got seventy, <laughs> and then sex after eighty when I was eighty. So they still want. It. So I said, "Well, I'm going to be around till ninety because we have to get this, you know." But however, and I used to embarrass my children, but not Did my you? grandchildren. <laughs> not the grandchildren. Oh my! And I have fifteen great grandchildren, and um, the oldest great grandson is a junior in college. So I have three great grandchildren in college. <laughs> so I tell you, you know, it's. Uh, it's really so life is good. I mean, you, you get a lot of pleasure. There's a lot of joy. You realize, you get more joy from things that you that were casual before, that you didn't notice before. Now you notice them, and uh, your friends. You get such pleasure from friends, and 
and from your family and from little things that happen that, mm -hmm. that you never even noticed before you get a lot of joy from so. but uh, i guess but feeling free and not having responsibilities pressing is very important isn't it it is important it mm -hmm. is important and uh, it gives you the uh, option you mm -hmm. know to do a mm -hmm. lot of things that you've always wanted to mm -hmm. do well we've been talking about keeping a vital uh, and you certainly have done that. Uh, how much do you think uh, attitude plays in, 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 st in staying vital as you're doing? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it, uh, there's a lot. It plays a, a great part in, uh, in keeping well. I think, I think being involved in things is very important. Find something that you enjoy. Uh, so everybody's going to have something they like. And get involved in what's, uh, what's happening with that. I think... Um, you're talking about a vocation or an avocation or a hobby? Whatever or it is, whatever it is, it can be any of those things. As long as it's, um, as, as you're doing something that you enjoy doing, and find out more about it, get more involved in it, and, uh, and you'll find a lot of joy in, in doing that. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, you have to have a positive outlook if you possibly can. Uh, there are lots of days when it's hard to do that. But uh, I put on some good music sometimes. I like um, I like jazz and I like music, you know, that sort of raises your spirits. Mm -hmm. so I'll put that on if I feel down. Um, I like to watch uh, some shows. I like uh, I love Lucy. I love that. I think she really has has mm. saved a lot of us from <laughs> from yes. the, and she's she's left a wonderful legacy, yeah. hasn't she? Is it still running? Uh, yeah, they're on the reruns around. I didn't know that. It's just on Channel 5. Mm -hmm. So I watch that once in a while, but I think to uh, uh, to zoom in on the positive things that you can, and mm -hmm. if you find yourself getting down and getting negative, call somebody that needs a little uh, a little uh, cheering up too. That helps. Oh. That helps. And think of somebody that's a little worse off than you are probably, mm -hmm. and, and call and have a good chat with them. And, uh, uh, that that's one thing that, and and reach yeah. out to other people. Right. People are not coming to you unless you reach. You've right. got to reach out. Of course, this is but sometimes as you get older, that's hard to do because you become more isolated and your circle of friends kind of diminishes. Oh, I know. So it becomes more difficult to do that outreach, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, you have to make young friends too. You make younger mm -hmm. friends, and you can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's possible. There's a lot of younger friends uh, that that would like to have association with an older person and it doesn't have to be a you yeah. know a constant but just to talk and and share things yeah. and we need to know more about younger people and they need to know more about us and i think that's true it's an intergenerational um, yeah. gap you know we need to yeah. close that you know there has been some talk about the, the, the division between the generations intergenerational mm -hmm. trouble uh, as you go around and you and you talk with these young people, what, what do you think? Is, th does that, is it real? Does it exist? Uh, to some extent, not as much as it did, uh -huh. because uh, younger people are, uh, so older people are more visible now. So, and in, I think the media has a lot to do with that. I think that we've shown older people now in more attractive and, uh, and human ways, and younger people have watched that. So I think their idea of older people has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, young, older people need to know more about younger people. They need to, to be with them more, and they need to be more tolerant. They need to be more understanding. And uh, uh, they can only do that by, by being with a younger person. Yeah. Well, of course, it's a two-way street. It works both oh, ways. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah, sure. Because sure. many young people are thoughtless and, and uh, of, of older people and yeah. you know you've so seen, you've seen this thoughtless of younger people yes we're yeah. we're all different yeah. you know and mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I know that Dr. Ancelo in uh, in Georgia did a, a survey that was in children's books about the way older people were being portrayed uh -huh. and uh, when he uh, talked to children afterwards they said uh, and asked them what they thought of older people they said oh they're boring oh, they're sick they're ugly you know but you find uh, that uh, the media has a lot to do with it. The, the all, all uh, branches of the medium, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the press, and so that has changed somewhat. But um, in children's books, I, I was just thinking about that. Frequently, in children's books, 
older people are portrayed very negatively. Oh, they're no. shown as uh, walking with canes. Yes. Uh, sitting the, old the, the old witch, the wicked witch. The old witch, sure. <laughs> and uh, so if children know that that's a fairy story, and, and I think, uh, as I say, older people now are dispelling a lot of the myths because they're more visible in attractive ways, and uh, they're more tolerant, and, uh, and you, you know that uh, when we talk about people being boring, there are young people are just as boring as older people. There are older yes, people that are boring and ugly, and yeah. young people I mean, at <coughs> all ages. It's people are people at any it's age. It's human <laughs> beings, yeah. Well, Lydia Bragger, you are quite an inspiration. We Thank are you. certainly glad that you Thank came you. down to talk well, to us. I, I, I like you a lot. You know? <laughs> I've known you a long time. I know. We've always and had I a really good time. I really being with you. Just <laughs> well, thank you. I've enjoyed thank it, you. too. We hope you've also enjoyed it, and we hope you'll be with us again next week.